direct from Las Vegas and the SEMA show, we talk to two of the top experts as they reveal for the first time secrets to their cutting edge front end suspension. With over three decades of pro touring experience, both under the hood and behind the wheel, Blake Foster, CEO of Speed Tech Performance and Winter Circle veteran Ron Sutton of Ron Sutton Race Technology, take us under the hood for the inside track and winner's tips. We're the Bennett Twins coming to you live at the SEMA show in Las Vegas. What is the number one secret to great suspension setup and tuning? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Airbags. For me, it's more like coilovers. The right parts? <laughs> Doing your homework. Experience. <laughs> Knowledge. I would say experience. Experience? Yeah. I, I like that answer, that's good. Hi, I'm Blake Foster, president of Speed Tech Performance, and I'm here today with Ron Sutton, and we're gonna go over our new extreme subframe that fits 67 to 69 Camaros and 70 to 81 Camaros. So this year, with the introduction of the extreme subframes from Speed Tech Performance, we decided to launch them at the 2015 SEMA show. Uh, it's been a great show, really busy, lots of interest in this new product of ours. Um, we hired a uh, longtime race suspension designer, Ron Sutton, to f do the final fine tuning and geometry locations on these chassis and subframes so that we could put to market the best product possible. We really didn't hold back anything on the suspension design. The only real compromises we've made are in other areas. There is no suspension on the market right now that has this good a geometry. I'm gonna let Ron tell you a little bit more about that and go from there. Hi, I'm Ron Sutton. I've been in racing for over 35 years. Most folks in the racing world know me from Ron Sutton's Winter Circle where we won almost 500 races. In my career, I've been fortunate enough to design a lot of race cars at one, uh, to build race cars, to be a crew chief, even a driver for a short period of time and stuff. And as much as I love the, the racing world, whether it be road racing, oval track, whatever it may be, open wheel, full bodied cars, it's all fun. But one of my most challenging projects and one of my most rewarding projects with the results has been the design of this new Speed Tech front suspension that goes in all of the clips and the frames in the Extreme Series produced by Speed Tech Performance. What we want to cover today is the, the features and the benefits and the performance advantages of the new Speed Tech Extreme frames and front clips. And uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be hired to uh, come in and do the design of the suspension geometry and also of all the steering geometry and there are several advantages that I want to be able to share with you today as we do this. Some of these advantages are quite simple and easy to achieve but one of the key things is, is we increase the motion ratio with where we've mounted the shock in here and it just makes the shock more responsive. It's just a packaging issue and you got to make sure you get it out there as far as you possibly can you can see how close it is out to the ball joint. Being very frank we're going to share some secrets with you today about this that we're not going to show how we achieve them uh, just because you know of a, a competition we've got a leading edge uh, front suspension here and well, I'm gonna share with you why it's better but I'm not gonna share with you all of our little secrets about how it's better and I hope you'll understand uh, one of the cool things that we were able to do in this is we were able to build the right of mount of, of a shock height into this setup where we could put the right correct uh, travel shock in this to achieve a low travel mid travel or even a high travel setting with the same shock no changes no worries all works really well there. The standard shock that comes in the extreme packages uh, is the Viking uh, coilover shock that is a double adjustable shock. And then some options up from there, uh, there's two Rytec options and uh, both of them are available with the Ron Sutton secret sauce valving in them in which we're running degressive pistons and my special valving. And there's a single adjustable option and there's also a triple adjustable option that we have there in the Rytec. And for the person that might prefer a JRI shock, we have JRI shock options in here that are also single adjustable, double adjustable, and triple adjustables on the JRIs. And again, those are all available uh, with my very mean, aggressive race valving. And what's cool about them is that they're real racy on the track. Uh, the JRIs and the Ride Techs are excellent on track, very tunable to help you balance your car, but when you start backing off the rebound valving, softening it up, softening it up, it brings back a very good street ride into the car. 
in racing, all we run is three-piece sway bars. There's just so many advantages to a three-piece sway bar. When we designed this cutting-edge extreme front suspension, really a three-piece sway bar was just a, a non-discussion because we knew we were going to do it that way. So what you see here in this tube that actually adds rigidity to uh, the frame is there are Delrin bushings in there that the sway bar goes through and it's a spline sway bar in there and we have the ability to run different diameters, different wall thicknesses I should say, of sway bars to change the rates in it. And then special, we made special steel arms that are splined. They're wide, they're thick, they're strong, no gonna be no deflection in there. One of the most important things we did is we is where we place this sway bar, it has no interference with a tire. Go look on any OEM production clip, and a lot of times the front frame is not the issue with what the tire is gonna hit, it's the sway bar. You'll notice how it's tucked in under here like this. We had these computer bent where we could achieve the proper mounting ratio out here to get the motion ratio on the sway bar that we were looking for. And the range of rates is amazing from down in the 400s all the way up into the 1200s. We can do just about anything you can imagine in sway bar rates in the front. One of my favorite features that we designed into this though is simply two holes. But we place them apart at the correct distance that they actually make about a 2% difference in the uh, front roll stiffness. And what that does for us is that allows us to put it into the long hole and have the right sway bar rate for autocross tracks and street driving, or to put it into the shorter hole, which will stiffen it by over, it'll stiffen the, the uh, actual roll stiffness of the whole car by over 2%. And what that does, now we've got a good road course track day car. One link change. Autocross on, you know, one day, run it in this, you're gonna run on the road course the next day, you just move the link and you've got a, the rate that's correct for that. Look what's happened here. The ATS spindle has really been a uh, standard in the pro-touring world as being one of the best spindles to add to your car. And when we designed this new front suspension in geometry, I looked at that, even though the guys at Speedtech said, Ron, you have a blank slate. Don't mess around, make this thing as best you can, as best as it is possible. Let's just do this thing right from the first time. And let's don't worry about trying to reuse anything else we've ever done, let's just build the best. I still look at their spindle and I really liked a lot about the geometry. So it, we started with the ATS spindle. It still uses the great C7 hub in the front of it, which is you know a very rigid uh, bearing and hub combination. And the basic design of the spindle is similar and the brake mounting is the same. A couple of differences that I made happen to do with the lower ball joint geometry and the steering arm geometry that help us achieve the bump steer we're looking for and also the uh, Ackerman that we achieved in it. Like any design that you do in a suspension, you have a lot of jobs to achieve, you know, from roll centers and Ackerman and camber gain and caster and getting the tires to run flat and so on and so forth. One of the also more important components, of course, is getting the bump steer dialed in. This thing came out almost perfect. I'm really proud of that, is that within three inches of travel, we have one thousandths of variance in the bump steer in three inches of travel. Even though the front suspension of this uh, awesome clip and frames are designed, frankly, like a cutting edge race car, as far as the geometry goes and the steering goes, it's still gotta be a street driver. You still gotta be able to drive this thing on the street and enjoy it and control the NVH, the noise, the vibration, the harmonics that gets come up out of the road and stuff like that. So what you're not gonna find here is, you know, is race ball bearings and race rod ends and stuff like that. This one here has Delrin bushings, which are as close to a race, low friction, low stick uh, performance that you can get without having that noise and vibration and harshness that comes from a rod in front suspension. You can see here we've got the uh, Delrin bushings in both of the upper uh, control arm pushing points and in the lower control arm bushing points. So you get very little deflection, you get instant response, they're self lubricating. It's really just the best of both worlds. You really have a very racy, low stiction, quick responding suspension here. And at the same time, you don't have the roughness and the harshness that you would from a racing front end. One little known thing in uh, the pro touring world that's very common in the racing world is that you need Ackerman, and quite frankly, a substantial amount of Ackerman built into the steering to achieve the optimum grip on the inside front tire. Getting the outside front tire when you're cornering to have optimum grip is relatively easy. Getting optimum grip from the inside front tire, that's where the heavy lifting is. The, what we've designed that's a cutting edge in this scenario here, in this front clip that's used in all of the frames and all the front clips that are the extreme package from Speedtech, is quite simply 
We have 100% Ackerman designed into it. 100%, that's pretty rare in a package to have that. It's not a full race scenario. So one of the big things when you're creating a front suspension, it just kind of do a lot of things. You gotta have the roll centers right, which we talked about. You gotta have the right amount of camber gain in it. The way we've got this front end set up, we actually can have the right amount of camber gain. We have the camber settings, the caster settings, and everything that you need, toe settings, for whatever setup you want to run. You know, you work that out with, uh, you know, with my friends at Speed Tech or with myself, and we will actually tell you exactly where to set that car up. And uh, I assure you, you're going to have optimum contact patch from that. One of the key parts in the design of the frame that uh, the team at Speed Tech did was make this so we could fit a 315 tire in the front. Baby, that's just grip. You can run a 315 in the front, you can get that tire to run flat on the ground through all the different angles of steering and dive. You have a real mean machine then. You have a serious amount of front grip, which is corner speed. Getting the rear end to grip to match that front grip is pretty easy to do. One of the challenges that folks have when you go to those big front tires, and I'm talking 275s on up, but definitely when you get up into the 315 range is, frankly, remanufactured rack and pinions were never meant for this kind of force. The grip of a 315 tire puts a tremendous amount of force on that whole front end, and especially the rack and pinion system in it. This is not some $300 remanufactured rack and pinion out of some production car. This is a racing rack and pinion. It's not only a racing rack and pinion, I think it's one of the best in the business. This is made by Sweet. Instead of being a $300 rack, it's almost a $1,000 rack and pinion. It's a dual power servo in this rack. It literally has double the power to make sure that you can turn this thing with ease. And it's tailorable. We can make whatever ratio the customer wants in it to control the speed of the steering. And we can control with the, what we call the torsion bar in the actual um, servo of the steering box. We can actually control how soft and easy or firm the customer wants this. We have a standard setup that we really believe is really great, but if the customer wants it to be a little different, we can tailor that to the customer. The most important component when you actually design a new suspension is getting all of the mounting points correctly, and we call them pivot points in the racing. The pivot points of the upper control arms, the pivot points that are in the ball joints, uh, both upper and lower control arms and so on, and this creates what's called the geometry of the race car, and it really determines the characteristics of the front end and the angles that we run these, the dimensions that we make these, all of that collaboration comes together and forms a geometry that either works in harmony or doesn't. And the unique thing about this particular package here is that no matter what suspension strategy you choose to run, if you want to run real stiff springs and just barely travel the front end on compression and dive, if you want to high travel it as much as three inches or anywhere in between, the roll center ends up in the optimum location for those setups. First thing I like to talk about is a bit of the construction. Um, we laser cut, uh, CNC form, and MIG weld all these uh, components in-house. Um, the design is built around extreme performance road race, autocross, and also uh, spirited street driving. And this is our newest rendition of our uh, extreme subframe. And I'd like to point out some of the, some of the uh, features of it. First off, it's all box construction. We use internal uh, gusset plates that are welded straight through the frame to provide additional rigidity. We use three vertical upright plates through the critical body mount locations to increase uh, torsional rigidity. We've put, uh, we've designed cutouts into the frame rail to allow uh, customers to run up to a 315 wide tire on the front of a first gen Camaro and possibly up to a 335 on the front of a second gen Camaro. That's why you see these notches here. We've built in a super strong uh, upright plate that uses a stainless steel cross shaft and conventional shims to get the alignment. Again, another, another cutout in the front to allow for the large tire and a, and a big turning radius of up to 30 degrees. Built-in tubular sway bar mount. We include uh, engine mounts, cross member for the transmission in all our packages. All the subframes come bare metal 
Uh, powder coating is an option. So in our design of these new extreme subframes, what we've done is made it a box construction. It's laser cut, CNC bent, we weld it in-house, and what we've done in this area to give extra strength is we've got three vertical plates running through here. Most, most other competitors are using two or they're using bent tubing. This is a far stronger um, construction. The body mount here tabs all the way through all three plates. It's welded on the inside as well as the outside. That adds more rigidity. In this area here, we've done cutouts so that you can fit a large 315, 335 tire on the front of a first or second gen Camaro. The tubular arms we build are all CNC uh, mandrel bent. They're a DOM tubing. We notch and weld them in-house. We use a 304 stainless cross shaft. We use adjustment lugs for, to get your caster we still use a standard shim so that you can get uh, finite caster ad adjustments. We have a, a cutout uh, in the front to allow full steering with the large tire. We use a, a 5 16 thick gusseted upper shock mount plate that also mounts the upper control arm. We use a tubular spline sway bar and we build this mount into the frame so that it really becomes another cross member. The center cross member again is all box construction. The, the vertical plates that run through the cross member actually run directly up into the frame rail to tie everything together from side to side and to box the frame rail to make it extra stiff. In the back we use standard HSS tubing that's slid in and welded at the front as well as fully welded all the way around. Our transmission cross member is fully adjustable. You can run from a, a 4L60 to a T56 to a 4L80. It's a, it's a tubular bent construction which allows the maximum exhaust clearance when you're building exhaust. For more great tips, check out the website at ronsuttonracetechnology.com or call us at 916-834-8051. You can also email Ron directly at ron at ronsuttonracetechnology.com.